Hello friends and thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's been a long while and I'm happy to be back. I just felt so called to come back to this space and share my thoughts and experiences with y'all. Um, I'll probably do like a life update sometime soon, but I think I might stay with this format of podcast for a little bit. But I really just wanted to come back here to talk to y'all about cryptocurrency because I legit feel like I have found a glitch in the matrix, the matrix being this reality that we were living in. So I have just felt called to come back and talk to y'all about it. And a little disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor in any shape or form. And I'm just a person on the internet talking about my experiences, becoming an, a crypto enthusiast. <laughs> so a little backstory about me. I feel like I've always been kind of money driven and always had like an entrepreneurial spirit. Like my mom likes to tell this one story about how when I was younger, like seven years old, I would be hanging out with my friends after school and I would just like be hustling like selling snacks like she would pack me snacks for after school right and i would just sell that to like people around me like i would sell like like if it was chex mix i would sell pieces of chex mix for like five to ten cents <laughs> or like a penny and just like make some change and so started my entrepreneurial journey and of course i feel like this is shaped by the fact that like I grew up in the US and like this is a capitalist society and all that but I feel like that's a totally different episode that I do want to dive into later about how like money's fake and all that and stuff like that but um I kind of just have always been like kind of driven like wanting to make money and stuff like that um never really been too obsessed with material items but just kind of seeing money as a means to an end. And I really started getting into stocks maybe two years ago. I started watching Graham Stephan, and I'll link him down below. But he he has a great money channel. He, he's very frugal. And I kind of, I feel like two years ago started my journey into financial independence i started i decided like you know what i want to retire early like this nine to five rat race is not something that i see sustainable for the rest of my life but i feel like it is a means to an end that i do want to participate in but i definitely do not want to like work 30 something years or more at the same company and retire at 60 like I definitely do want to um, do my own thing and kind of have that financial independence so I really started reading a bunch of financial literacy books like um, what did I read I read like millionaire habits um there was also this one book, if I can, f I'll find all these books, I'll just link them down below. But there was this one book that really kind of drove me to appreciate the idea of like becoming financially independent and retiring early. And I never really saw that as an option, but now I feel like we're living in a time where anything's possible you can make money doing anything you want and it's becoming more easy to learn more easy to make money if you know where to look and stuff like that but so i'll link all those books below but i kind of just absorbed all of this information and decided, you know what, I'm going to become financially independent and do my own thing and work 
not because I need money, but because I want to work, because I want to add some kind of value to whatever I'm doing in this life. So I started with stocks and I was just kind of like buying really established stocks like Vanguard, um, Vanguard, the Vanguard VTI, I forget the full name. But so this is a stock, like an index stock where it you're just buying a group of stocks. Like they get a bunch of successful companies and then they give you a share of that group and you just hold it. And some years they give like, you know, 30%, some years it's down to 7%, but you know, on average, you're gonna get like at least 7% return. And so I kind of started there and buying like some other companies that are just like General Motors and stuff like that. And then I met my boyfriend and he was really into stocks and, but he was doing like day trading and stuff and shout out to him to kind of like push me to learn more about stocks and stuff like that because it was about around that time where GME like GameStop stocks really blew up like if y'all remember that I don't even remember how long ago was that ago but time is kind of non-existent at this point to me (laughs) <laughs> it feels like time is moving fast and slow at the same time. But I'll find an article and like link it down below. But basically, the stock, GameStop stocks, like they were down to 15, 30 bucks. I think they were like 15 bucks, right? And then so the hedge funds, they bet against the stock. Like they were like, you know. GameStop is a shit stock and it's probably going to still like be a shit stock in a year. So, you know, let's put money and bet on that. And then so (laughs) some people in Reddit were like, you know what? All right, bet. You're going to come for our GameStop. We're going to come for you. So they pumped this stock. They pumped GameStop stock to $250, bro. Like, and so that made some people so much money. And of course the hedgies lost their money and, you know, regular people were becoming rich. And then I was like, you know what? This is so insane. This concept of making money by making your money move, right? (laughs) When Cardi B said, I make money move, I really felt that. No, I'm just kidding. But actually I did. (laughs) But it was kind of a new concept because I was like, I was kind of understanding it, but I was like, yo, if the market can be so manipulated by this, we really are strength in numbers. Like, we don't even know how strong we are, like, if we all come together, bro. Like, these people, they became rich, right? And, well, maybe not everyone, but, you know, they were having more money than they had before. So then that introduced me to the idea of like these pump and dumps where people are just, it's power in the masses where they're pumping this stock and then they're dumping it going on to the next one, right? And so then I moved kind of over to crypto when um, my boyfriend, he was telling me about, you know, oh, we do stocks, like him and his friends, they do stocks. And then he's like, yeah, some of my boys are getting into crypto. And I was like, I kind of already knew, um, like the crypto sphere a little because my brother back in 2018, he made money like off of Bitcoin and he bought it when I believe he said he bought it for like $200 a coin and it exploded to $20,000. And so he made some money off of that. So I already knew kind of like cryptocurrency could be, like it could make you a lot of money. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'm down with it, right? And (laughs) so then that kind of started my journey into the crypto sphere. So basically, I'm just coming here to talk to y'all about the the cryptocurrency sphere and to 
just kind of like, just to give y'all a roadmap, I want to talk about how we are witnessing a bull market where it's very profitable right now to invest in crypto. I also want to talk about safe coins versus high risk coins and also like looking for a good coin and like reading the market and also some exchanges I like. So what kind of got me introduced into this is I, I was like, okay, well, let me buy some cryptocurrency. I started out at crypto.com. I don't really recommend them. I don't really like their exchange that much. I personally use KuCoin. I like it better. Stay away from the margin training, uh, trading there. The margin trading and also the futures training, trading, do not do that unless you are um, experienced because I feel like there's a large chance that you will get wrecked if you do that. Um, but so I started out with like Engine Coin, ENJ Coin, and so you know, Zenny, my boyfriend, was telling me about that, and then so I was like, you know what? Bet I'll invest a little bit, right? I put like fifty or a hundred, like I start, I put fifty bucks, and then another fifty bucks, right? And so I bought in when it was like at $2 and I want to say like $2 and maybe 10 cents or something like that. And I literally witnessed it in the course of days grow from that to um, $3. And then so I was just riding on this euphoria because I was like, yo, what? Like I'm making money by my money making money? What? Like it, it was just such a foreign concept to just see these gains so fast and I was riding on a high until it you know peaked out at like three bucks and then it started going down and then I was like kind of panicking <laughs> panicky selling um but that's a different story I just kind of like but you know I did make a profit right and I was really happy about that and so right now we are witnessing a bull market and what that means is like basically um people are we're getting new investors into the crypto sphere so last bull market when bitcoin hit twenty thousand dollars that was a bull market there was so many people just buying into cryptocurrency and they drove the prices up. And this was not only Bitcoin, it was all the like other altcoins, which all the altcoins are like just any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin, Ethereum, Engine, that sort of thing. So we were just seeing so many new investors um, in that bull run that drove the prices up. And then what separated um, that last bull market from this bull market. So I've seen some people talking about um, the, the last bull market. I personally did not witness it, right? But so I've been listening to other people in the crypto sphere, on YouTube, on Reddit, kind of talking about what's different from the last bull market versus this bull market. And so the main thing the main two things I think that separate the last bull market from this bull market is the fact that um, one, there was so much speculation with this last bull market in 2018. There was a lot of people that were like, oh, you know, it's rumored that exchanges are going to start accepting Bitcoin, like Bitcoin is going to be accepted by businesses now. Like it was all running on speculation. There was like largely no set in stone plans or framework that was saying, yeah, you know, <laughs> we're going to accept Bitcoin, right? And versus now, there is so many exchanges like there's PayPal, for example, is now accepting like Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin. Like you can buy that on PayPal and send it to people like pay with that. And I think that's so cool. And also like Tesla, Tesla is now accepting Bitcoin as payment and they're not going to be converting the Bitcoin to 
like dollar, like US dollar, they're just going to keep it as Bitcoin. And also a, a number of other corporations are just investing, buying Bitcoin because Bitcoin has really set itself apart. Like it is gold, basically. I, I see it as gold. Like, so <laughs> I don't see it dropping down to, you know, back to 20K or 200. Like I realistically, I don't see that happening anytime soon. I think that Bitcoin's going to keep going up and it's just going to be the gold standard. Um, and also what separated the last bull market from this bull market is the fact that in the last bull market, what really kind of triggered the bear market where everyone started panic selling everything and the market like we saw a bull market where the, the prices peaked and then they just dropped down so low and then they'd just been at that low level since until now, basically until now they've really blown up. So the reason the second reason why is because websites were not prepared for that volume. There was not as many exchanges as there are now to buy cryptocurrency. There's a lot more websites to buy cryptocurrency nowadays. And back then, like so many websites were crashing at the peak of the bull run, um, when there was so many investors trying to buy volume, websites were crashing and people were like, oh shit, like, you know, excuse me, they're not ready for this. <laughs> and that's what people thought. So then people just started panic selling and then that that started the kind of um, ice age of just dormancy until now. But now we have a lot more websites, we have a lot more, we have partnerships. And I do think that cryptocurrency is the future. I'm not gonna say that, you know, the dollar is going to go away. I don't see the dollar going away or like, you know, the government, the government like currency is going away. I just think that cryptocurrency is going to become more widely accepted. That's what I see us moving towards. Um, yeah, so also I wanted to talk about safe coins versus like more high risk coin. So I kind of touched on this, but Bitcoin to me seems like a safer coin, right? And I actually saw this tweet on Twitter by ZSS Becker, and I'll link the tweet below if y'all want to check that person out. I just saw this tweet, someone retweeted it, and I thought it was golden. But they said, Bitcoin is the climate. Altcoins are like the weather. There's more reward for taking the risk on betting on next week's weather than if you bet on Antarctica, Antarctica staying cold. So that's basically like Bitcoin is going to stay like high. You know, it, it does go down like I will say this. The cryptocurrency market is a lot more volatile than the stock market. And that's just what you're signing up for, at least now. I think as time progresses, like we will see um, more stable times where maybe the cryptocurrency market isn't as volatile, but for now it seems very volatile. And like Bitcoin, it was hitting like 50K, going back down to like 40K, and then jumping up to 55K, jumping down 10,000, jumping up 15,000. Like it was following this pattern, right? But you were seeing that if you're looking, if you're zooming out, Bitcoin is on a steady rise. And it's, I think it's going to keep going up. And I've seen some predictions saying that Bitcoin is going to hit 100K by the end of the year. And I definitely see that as very possible, probably before the end of the year, maybe even reaching like 130,000. But I think it definitely is going to stay up. It's going to stay high. And with these other altcoins, there are some that are more established, some more safer altcoins. I think Ethereum is like the second safest coin um, compared to like Bitcoin because it has been 
kind of steady on the rise. Um, but until they can get their layer two solution out where they can kind of um, work on very high gas fees, because right now it costs a lot of money to trade with Ethereum. Like it costs a lot of money on, on some exchanges to trade Ethereum. Like they have gas fees. Um, so like when you send Ethereum or receive it or like buy with it, you're charged a fee. But I think until they can get that figured out, which they're going to get that figured out, they said in like June, until they can do that, I think once they do that, then they'll really start seeing a lot of um, parabolic growth. Maybe not as crazy as Bitcoin, but who knows. But so there are some more safer coins versus the high risk coins. So like, I'll link this one channel down below where he talks about how to pick out um, good coins, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. But okay, so I have a scenario for y'all because there's more risk in buying smaller coins because they aren't as established as Bitcoin. They aren't as like, you know, legitimized as Bitcoin. So we really don't know what the future holds. Like, of course, everything's uncertain, right? But it feels like Bitcoin has made a space for itself and all these other coins. Like, I'm not gonna compare apples to cucumbers to bananas and stuff like that, right? Because that's what I feel like um, we're doing when we compare when we compare cryptocurrencies because there are different uses. Um, for example, there are some coins that are being used for esports betting, like B Pro and Chili's, and then there are some gaming coins like Engine and Sand and VRA. And so it's kind of like. Yeah, it kind of really is like comparing cucumbers to oranges and stuff like that. When you compare altcoins with other altcoins, like that's basically what you're doing. But I think there's room, there's enough room for all of these coins to grow if they want to grow. Like if the if the team's good, who's running the coin and all that works out. But so there's more risk with these altcoins. Um, but there's also more reward. So I'll take this example. Let's say you have $500 and then you put that in Bitcoin. Let's say you put $500 in Bitcoin um, when it was $44,000 by the end of February. And then two months later, it's $63,000. Now that's a 45% return or like $225 that you made on your investment, right? So now you have $725. So imagine instead of putting that $500 in Bitcoin at the end of at the end of February, let's say you put that $500 in Engine when it was 50 cents per coin and then you sold it 2 months later, the same time around the same time at 368. Now that is a 636% return, or that's $3,180 on your investment. So you're getting way more return on investment because when you're investing in Bitcoin, I feel like if you're going to invest in Bitcoin, it should be um, for like a retirement fund. Because I do see Bitcoin reaching like 200k. But personally, I'm trying to like get the highest return on investment. So that's kind of why I'm like me personally right now, I'm not investing in like Bitcoin. I'm doing I'm going for the smaller altcoins that are higher risk, but also higher in, in um, return on investment. OK, I moved my setup to my closet because it was getting kind of noisy in my room. You could hear the traffic and doorbells and stuff like that so to be quieter in here but basically as I was saying there's a lot of money to be made in crypto there is a lot of money to be in the to be made in these smaller higher risk altcoins that are cheaper and that brings me to my next section which is looking for a good altcoin now we live in the age of information, and if you take, for example, YouTube, 
type in cryptocurrency, you will get a million videos pop up and it's overwhelming. Trust me, I was there. It's very overwhelming. And I think the first place that you should start is to educate yourself on cryptocurrency, on what cryptocurrency is, like what are the components of it, what are gas fees, what is mining, like just educate yourself on cryptocurrency. And I'll link some of my favorite YouTube channels for cryptocurrency down below. But there's this one channel that I watch like religiously and it's JRNY Crypto. He's very level-headed. He is he he is like so consistent with his video uploads. He uploads a video every single day about crypto news. He has this playlist for like crypto trading for beginners. I'll link it down below. He is just amazing. Like he's wonderful. He has and he also has videos where he comes out with like his crypto picks. And he, in this one video that he has, it's called being ahead of her, being ahead of the herd. So basically, when when you're seeing a coin go up, like hundreds of dollars, like Binance coin, it was it's at like five hundred dollars now. And it was literally at 40 bucks like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> that That's an insane profit margin, right? And so in order, but like, you know, me, I, I didn't even see that coming. I'm new to the crypto sphere. I wasn't ahead of the herd. The herd was already there, you know, when they, when they took it from $40 to $500, but so he talks about being ahead of the herd and finding hidden gems, as he calls it. So he talks about in this video how to pick out these hidden gems. And he says that you need to look at the long term vision of the token. So if you go to a cryptocurrency like a certain tokens website and you see on their website, maybe they have a tab that says roadmap. They maybe they have that on their, their, uh, homepage. Maybe they have just like, so a roadmap is like, they have this timeline of what they want to accomplish. Like maybe let's say April, they want to get listed on like a certain crypto exchange or something like that. So if they have a roadmap and then they have that, going on for, till the end of the year or maybe until next year as well, that's a great um, sign that this token, you know, they have something going for them. They have a mission. They have a vision. So that's really good, he says. And also a good team. If you go to their team and it's all anonymous people, that's not to say, I don't think necessarily that coin's going to be terrible, but he usually endorses tokens excuse me, he usually endorses tokens that have a transparent team where you go to the team and it's like, you see the pictures, you see their LinkedIn's, you see maybe a little bio, right? The team is transparent. Maybe it's all like programmers and uh, maybe they have like, you know, some marketing people. Maybe they're coming from different organizations that are, that were thriving, right? So they're bringing that knowledge from there. If they have a good team, like that's a great sign as well. Also, if they have lots of events going on, then that's a great sign as well. And there's this one website called coinmarketcal.com and I'll link that down below. But basically you can go to this website, type in any coin, and then you'll see what events they have going on, if they have any events. And when a coin has a lot of events, um, that's like getting exposure and stuff like that. So that's good for the coin. That's good for you if you're investing in the coin, because that means, you know, cryptocurrency, it's all about supply and demand, right? So those same, uh, capitalist principles apply to this as well. And also, um, if a coin is providing utility, if they're bringing something of value to the community, like there's different coins, right? So 
As I mentioned before, there's different coins like Engine and Sand and VRA. Those are different gaming coins. And gaming is really big, right? There's a lot of money to be made in gaming. And also the esports, like there's B Pro. That's a really small one, but it's high risk. Um, there's also Chili's. They're doing like esports and betting. And, you know, sports is always going to be around sports. I think um, the future of betting is definitely going to be more in the crypto space. So those are they're providing utility in that way. And also another example. So I invested in this coin called Mina Protocol and they they created the lightest blockchain. So basically, like. Take Bitcoin, for example, it's it's costly to send Bitcoin. You get a fee. You have to pay a fee for sending Bitcoin. And um, what and also the people who are facilitating that transaction, the miners, um, it's also there. So they they have to have powerful computers to facilitate this trade. And they're having to get more and more powerful computers. And I saw this one article that was saying, like, you know, for one day's <laughs> one day's worth of work of a Bitcoin miner of the computer, it takes as much electricity as like, you know, multifamily home a whole month, like a whole month of electricity for them. This person is using in a day. So it is taking a lot of energy. I don't think that, you know, we're going to see Bitcoin disappearing any soon, anytime soon. Um, but I do think that there is a market for cheaper, um, cheaper altcoins to come up. And Mina Protocol is something I definitely see as being um, really good in that sense. Also, like I really liked the when I read about Mina Protocol, I, f I saw that they were doing something different. Honestly, I'm not like, you know, a cryptocurrency guru by any means. I'm still very much a beginner and learning every day. So when I invested in it, I was not sure if it would I wasn't sure how much utility, how how valuable it was in the crypto space. But I was like, yeah, you know, fuck it. Right. And the projections for this coin, I bought it at 25 cents and the projections for this coin are eight dollars, 16, 30, 45. People are um, future trading on this Mina protocol. They're speculating 50 bucks. You know, that's so much return. Right. So much return. So coins that are doing something that's different. Um, I definitely see those being profitable. Like there's also this one coin called B cube and they're doing like artificial intelligence where um, it's trading. It's using algorithms and you're using these you're using their um, you're basically using their platform to like trade crypto. And I definitely do see the future as being with more AI, more artificial and more artificial intelligence. Um, so I definitely think that will be something great to invest in. Um, the token sale is private right now. I couldn't get in on that, but I will get in on that when it becomes public. But I definitely think that when you see coins that are doing something new, it's, yeah, take notice and maybe invest in that. But also learning more about the crypto space, learning more about cryptocurrency is definitely going to help you with that. Because um, you could throw your money at a lot of coins and, you know, just kind of roll the dice. But I think it's better if you learn about cryptocurrency. Also, Reddit. Reddit. Oh, Reddit. <laughs> I really like Reddit for looking at coins. Like I'll, I'll read about a coin and then I'll go to Reddit and be like, what does everyone else think about this? Right. Cause I don't know if y'all are like this, but I'm like the type of person that sometimes I just need to have, like, I just want to see other people's opinions. You know, sometimes I look at stuff with rose colored glasses. So it's nice to 
hear the negatives. It's nice to hear the positives. It's nice to go to these different communities. And also you can go to like cryptocurrency news. Like they have different forums, right? Where you can go and just read about cryptocurrency. Um, but yeah, I just like Reddit. Reddit is pretty cool. And also for those um, higher risk, higher reward coins, icodrops.com, that is a great place to buy um, these cheap coins that are, that really see those, you know, 40,000% returns sometimes. Like there's this coin called Casper coin, but disclaimer, this is for people who are not in the U.S., so, I mean, if you have a friend that's not in the U.S. and you want to, like, you know, hey, can you take part in this sale, you know? Eh? Can you do that? You want to do that, right? <laughs> that would be a great way to go, right? Um, but they're for non-U.S. people. Um, but there was this coin sale that happened, Casper Coin. And they were selling their coin at, like, 0. 0.015 so like one cent basically a little more than one cent per token and they have made many millionaires because this coin it hasn't been released yet but it's projection like it was like at six dollars and six dollars from one cent to six dollars that's literally forty thousand percent like if you had taken that same $500 and invested it in this Casper coin, bro, you would have had like $200,000. Bruh. ICO drops is going to make so many millionaires. So many millionaires. And this is what... Ah, this is why I'm trying to get this information out, y'all. Because, yo, like I have never fathomed making money with money like I have but not in this way like it's literally like you're printing your own money you just buy this coin and then you wait and then you know granted it's a good coin it's gonna grow exponentially like dang wow 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 but there's also the safer altcoins um some like ADA theta Engine, Litecoin, um, you know, some coins from reputable exchanges like uh, KCS coin from KuCoin, PancakeSwap, Voyager coin, also, you know, BNB, Binance coin has really popped off. Those are, those are some of the more safer coins like Theta. I know Theta has partnered with like, was it like Google? They partnered with Google some of these coins are really doing great things. Like they're the partnerships and everything. They're, they're really making a name for themselves. Like, so you can find those more established coins as well. And you're still going to get like hella return. Like if, if you buy ADA at, you know, $1 and 30 cents, and then it jumps to $10 the end of the year. That's way better than, you know, keeping your money in your bank. I'm not telling you to go spend your life savings on a coin because, you know, only, only invest what you can lose, but I'm not telling you you're going to lose all this money, but just, just as a precaution, right? Just as a precaution, just have some, like, just have some play money. Experiment first. And that brings me to my next section, which is reading the market. Now, in the crypto space, I've noticed that sometimes you will see pump and dumps with no utility. You will see um, a shit coin. That's what they call them. Shit coins that are not doing anything like they're not they're not having events coming up. Maybe they don't even have partnerships. They don't really have much utility. But for some reason, they are pumping and dumping. And that is because I, I honestly don't know. I feel like maybe there's like a community that I don't know of where it's kind of like the Redditors. Um, I've actually heard that the same people like Wall Street Bets, the people who pumped up GameStop, um, 
that stock to be 240. I've heard that they've turned crypto. Like, so, I mean, that's probably who's doing this, but they're just pumping coins. So then you'll see like this massive pump of a coin you've never even heard about and looks like a shit coin, right? So there are those pumping dumps with no utility and I have no idea. Like when you're riding the wave, like it's pretty cool, right? I actually decided to, you know, throw 60 bucks at this one um, shit coin and I made like 40 bucks and it was just experimenting, right? Um, to see what would happen. And, but I honestly, I don't really want to mess with those because it's really risky. Like you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, but you don't know what's going to happen with all of this, right? But even more so with these pump and dumps with these coins that have no utility. Um, But also, so experimenting before diving in with both feet, that would kind of be my next kind of take of what I did because... Even when I was doing like stock trading, full disclosure, the stocks, they're, they really went to the grave, bro. Like, I think I'm just going to take that money out and put it into the crypto. But <laughs> I, I think that experimenting is great. But I mean, yeah, just do you experiment see what see what'll happen but I've seen like forums where like on reddit where people are like man I just lost my life savings I'm like bro why 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 would you like save up so much money and then just blow it off in so fast like you could win big don't get me wrong but you could also lose like hella big so I mean I mean do you right (laughs) do you So I'm kind of like seeing a pattern where when Bitcoin is doing well, all the altcoins are doing well, but there's more return on investment with these smaller altcoins and Bitcoins as I went over. But when Bitcoin is declining, usually the altcoins are likely to decline as well, although some may surge. But when they decline, like when those altcoins decline, in price when they decrease in price that's when you buy right you have you ever heard um where is this from like i feel like this is wolf of wall streets <laughs> buy low sell high but you know that's real buy low sell high it can be so tempting to really fear like have that fomo fear of missing out like where you're like oh my gosh it's it's gonna keep going up forever bro Like, it's never going to decline. It can be so tempting to think that way. I know. I definitely know. But stay strong, my friends. Always buy low. (laughs) I mean, unless you get, like, you know, the feeling that this coin is really going to keep skyrocketing and it's not really going to have any significant lows. Like, sometimes you can look at a chart and be like, oh, well, it goes up, you know, 75% and then it goes down 30% and then it goes up 75%, you know, like, or like it'll stay down when it goes, you know, at 30%, it'll stay around that, around that range, right? Sometimes you can look at the market. I mean, once again, it's so hard to tell with all the volatility in the crypto market, but I mean, sometimes, you know, it keeps going up and you're like, dang, dude, like BNB, I was waiting for it because it hit like, it hit like $200. And I was like, man, it's just going to go down. Right. And then it kept going up and then it would go down a little bit, just a little bit. And then it would go up, go down just a little bit, go up. Right. And then, so it's, it's just hard to tell. And when you're a beginner, it's even harder to tell because you don't even really know about like, or personally, I didn't really know about any of this, right? This is just all um, learning from my mistakes, right? But I appreciate my mistakes because they've made me so strong. And I mean, I haven't, it's not like I've lost like a huge amount of money, right? It's, I, so I see, but I think that's largely because I didn't put like a lot of money in this, right? Um, But so... What was I at? Yeah, if you're buying peak prices, 
you know, prepare to hold long term and dollar cost average. That's what JRNY crypto taught me. You know, if you're buying peak prices, you're going to have to hold that for, you know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, depending on the coin. But dollar cost average is when, so let's say you buy a coin at like one, $1.50. And then, so that's the peak price. Maybe it was down to a dollar. And then let's say maybe it goes down to $1.20 and it stays around that range for like a month. Then just buy it at $1.20 because that's its new, that's its new uh, resistance. So the market will like go up and then find a lower price kind of stay there right and then it'll go up more and then go back down find a new low that's higher than the previous low if it's a good coin right um but yeah yeah but once you develop your own kind of like intuition on being able to decipher between which coins are really going to be successful and more successful than others then you can learn to trust yourself like, honestly, I need to work on my intuition because sometimes I've been making mistakes, like, that I saw coming, right? <laughs> or maybe that was just my anxiety coming to fruition, right? <laughs> Who knows? But ultimately, yeah, don't, don't invest more money than you can lose. Don't invest your whole life savings. Unless you really want to, you know, gamble. You really, if, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, I'm not a financial advisor either, so... But I don't think anyone, any financial would, advisor would tell you to, you know, gamble away your life savings, bro. Um, so where to buy? My last section. Where to buy? I really like QCoin. So beginners, like when you're starting out from the beginning, I think that Coinbase and Crypto.com are pretty good. But I did have some problems with Crypto.com because I think... I think the the issue was that I was like trying to like send basically all my crypto to the Qcoin to my Qcoin account when I discovered Qcoin I was like man this this is way better than crypto and then I was like you know what I'm going to just transfer everything out right so I think they thought I was like trying to they maybe they thought um that someone got a hold of my account cuz they're like damn why is she transferring everything out so they kind of like you know, and their customer support there was terrible. So I wouldn't really recommend crypto.com. Coinbase is a good starting place, but so the thing is, um, sometimes you can see like, oh, you know, the market is going up, you know, it, or the crypto, this crypto coin is going up 50% or a hundred percent. And then it's dropping down 30%. Then it's like staying there a month and then it goes up to a hundred, 200%. And then it'll go down 30%, right? If you're seeing like a pattern like that, granted, it's a good coin and maybe, you know, you're feeling it right. Then maybe you want to buy at the neck. Maybe you see it at its high and you think, oh, well, it's probably going to go 30 down it's probably going to go down 30%, right? Maybe that's what you think. So um, with Qcoin, they have a limit feature where you can put like, okay, buy, buy um, you know, 50 coins at 50 cents or something like that, right? But Coinbase, you can't do that. You just get on Coinbase and you're like, okay, I'll buy the coin at this at this price. When I first got into crypto, I didn't even know, I didn't even know <laughs> Qcoin existed like that. I didn't know platforms existed like that, where you could put on the, the market, the limit, um, trading. And like, if you go on like E-Trade and other sites like that, you can set it like that. So that's why I really appreciate Qcoin, um, for doing that, um, for having that. But it is like, it is kind of weird to like look at their website because like they have it like in candlestick format. But um, if you're looking for something more like I don't really use like when I'm looking at a coins chart, I usually look at um, let me look this up. There's this one website. What is it? Coinmarketcap.com. That's a great website because it'll show you each day. It'll show you like you can 
zoom in, you can see what was this price a year ago or what was this price a month ago or last week or just this week or just today. Excuse me. But I really do like, um, I like coin market cap. Dang, I just checked Ethereum. It's at $2,400. Nice. Wow, that's wild. Wow. Can you believe it? That's crazy. Um, this reminds me of a tweet that Binance made. Binance is like an exchange for crypto as well. And also you got to something else. <laughs> I'm so off track. Sorry. So something else you got to check for, like, because I wanted to be on Binance exchange, but apparently because I live in Texas, apparently like some exchanges won't be like I can't do that because Texas has some regulations so some websites won't let you exchange on their website or they won't let you be a customer there um, so you got to look out for that and also because I'm in the US like there's some other limitations that's why ICO drops like I can't you know legally like participate in that like I can't create my own account basically um, because I'm in the US and yeah, that's, there's some, it's like this law about the SEC, SEC, is that security exchange? Yeah. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. So they say, you know, if you're buying an ICO, that's the, that's technically like a stock. And they, they just have all these regulations. So basically they're like, no, because ICOs are definitely going to, you know, appreciate in value. And I don't fully know why, but so ICO drops, I can't really do that. Right. Oh yeah. So bringing me back to the tweet that Binance did. So they said back in December, 2020, $500, you have $500 what would you buy? And they had a picture of like Apple um, headphones. And then they also had Ethereum. Ethereum was $500 and Apple iPhones or Apple, sorry, Apple headphones were $500. And they said a lot can change in four months. And I think that's like foreshadowing because a lot of things can change in in um, four months because Ethereum went from $500 to now it's $2,500. So it did a 5x return, bro. That's wild. So if you had invested back then, you'd have $2,500. You have a $2,000 profit. That's really good. But so that's where I kind of see us going with this whole bull market. But so, yeah, Qcoin, I really like Qcoin. Coinbase, great for starters, but you can't get the price that you want. You have to kind of like, it was really stressful in the beginning for me personally, because I was like, oh, I want to buy it when it goes low. And then so like, I would check it periodically. And it was getting to the point where I was checking it so much, like just to try and catch it at that drop. Right. And then so, <clears throat> excuse me, it would just be so frustrating because, um, I'd be like, dang it, I missed it, you know, like, it, it's skyrocketing now, or like, you know, so Qcoin, I really like Qcoin. Um, there's also like Voyager, I created a Voyager, but I still need to like, um, authenticate myself. And there's like other exchanges too. But I think Qcoin, Kraken and Voyager are probably like, I think those are really good ones. Also, there's like uh, staking opportunities like BlockFi where you can just buy coins and stake different coins. Like I think they have certain coins that you have to buy. Like it's not like you can buy any coin and just stake it. It has to be a staking, like an agreed upon thing. Right. So, um, that's also something that JRNY crypto was talking about how that's what's so different from last bull market is here. Now we do have these options where you can just stake your coins and hold them and you'd get like 8% return. Um, and they pay, some of these exchanges pay you out 
in um, the actual token, like instead of giving you like, let's say you invest a hundred bucks and instead of giving you like 8%, eight bucks, they would give you $8 in um, whatever currency you bought. So in addition to you staking, so like, let's say you hold ADA, you hold a hundred bucks of ADA, right? And you held it at a hundred dollars. And then by the end of the year, it's, you know, gone up to $10. Now you have a thousand bucks plus you have more ADA because they give you like, you know, that eight bucks worth of ADA or whatever. I mean, honestly, you're not going to be rich off that, but you might as well be making money off of it if you're going to hold it anyway. Right. And it's much better than having your money in the bank. Right. Earning what, like 0.05% man, the banks are really, there's some now, so i tell you what, but <laughs> I do have to say on Qcoin, uh, stay, af- stay away from margin trading. I said this like earlier in the podcast, but I would advise no one to do the margin trading, nor the future trading, the futures trading. I don't even fully know how that works. Like I do, but I don't. So like with margin trading, I literally got a notification the other day that was like, Qcoin was like, we will give you $10,000 to invest. And I'm like, bro, what? (laughs) No. And then so I was like looking up margin trading and then um, like it it works for different exchanges that do that. But like, I think for Qcoin, it was like, Some of them, it's like if you lose 1% of the money that they give you, they will liquidate your whole account and they will take all your money. So I think that's really like messed up that they're trying to get money that way. But I just stay away from that. And futures trading, futures trading is like you're betting on what the price is going to be. And I mean, both ways, both with future trading, margin trading, I feel like you could just get wrecked. So, I mean, if you're a beginner, definitely stay far away from that unless you have like, yeah, I would just advise against it. (laughs) But so that pretty, pretty much ends it for this podcast. I hope that y'all enjoyed and y'all got something out of this. Let me know what your thoughts are and if y'all are going to start investing in crypto or what coins y'all think are going to do well and yeah I'll probably I'm thinking that maybe I'll come out with a new podcast every week or every two weeks let me know if you want me to talk about anything else like regarding crypto or regarding anything in life veganism yeah (laughs) thank you so much for joining me today and if you aren't already subscribe and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video it helps out with the youtube algorithm and i'll talk to y'all soon and i hope that y'all have a wonderful rest of your week bye guys and gals and non-binary pals